Open now the depths of your heart to find eternity and live for more than your eyes can see. Give God the glory for all eternity. Perhaps we never really think of parables as figures of speech, but they are. In fact, the parable has been described as an extended simile. A simile makes a comparison by pointing out the similarity of one thing to another at a single point, for example, as a dove or like sheep. The parable does the same, but draws the comparison out into further points of likeness to teach with a broader spectrum of detail. The word parable means a placing beside, in other words, a comparison. So let's think of a parable as a comparison of two things using stories and events from everyday life to present truth of lasting importance. When we think of parables, I think many tend to think that Jesus was the first to use them, but that's not so. We find some striking examples of parables in the Old Testament. Nathan used a parable to convict King David of his sins in 2 Samuel 12, verses 1 through 4. Joab later used a parable to get David to make amends with his son Absalom in 2 Samuel 14, verses 5 through 7. We should go into the study of each parable looking for one central lesson. For example, we have a particular point being made by Jesus in the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 12. If the reader isn't careful, the number of wise and foolish virgins, the act of going to the merchants, and the time of night will be emphasized to validate some doctrine found elsewhere in Scripture, or even something not found in Scripture. What Jesus wanted the disciples to learn is found in verse 13. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. We mustn't force his meaning beyond that. In the parable of the sower, one might try to see the soil enriched with fertilizer, representing study aids, but that would be unintended by the Lord. He also did not imply that there should only be one preacher in a field, nor should we conclude that seed cannot be scattered more than once on the same ground, in other words, additional teaching. Jesus, being the master teacher, used the parable to perfection. His use of the parable was for the purpose of explaining deeper things about the coming kingdom which people could not yet see. He took everyday events that were well known to his audience and made known spiritual truth of the coming kingdom. The application was truth which was higher and more enduring. The power of the parable was found in the fact that the listener already knew the details that it rehearsed and they would simply need to take the central lesson to heart. Perhaps the classic parable called upon to illustrate this is the parable of the sower, found in all three of the Synoptic Gospels. Jesus provided the interpretation shortly afterward, which makes it somewhat of a key to unlock the meanings of several parables. It's possible that there was a sower within view of Jesus' audience as he uttered this parable. He may have pointed to that sower as he began. Here was a common down-to-earth process, understood well by the people of that day. Jesus did not tell them anything they didn't already know. Seed falls on the ground, some gets eaten by birds, some germinates and gets choked by weeds or, par or parched by the sun, and some grows to maturity and bears fruit. There was nothing new in any of that but its application spoke volumes regarding mankind's response to God's Word. And that's the point. People accepting or rejecting truth is a function of the heart. A noble and honest heart receives the Word and bears fruit. Rejecting the truth shows that there's a heart problem. Well, I have a few more points to make on parables, but I'm out of time. So in our next video, we'll pick up here and finish up our look at this beloved method of teaching used by Jesus, the Master Teacher.